if you have been watching my videos regularly you must have come across part 2 of heat treatment series in part 2 i described on iron iron carbide diagram wherein i had shown you how this austenite is formed depending upon temperature and percentage carbon conditions if you have not seen that video i request you to go and see that video again in that video it was also shown that effect of austenite grain size is very much on various heat treatment processes such as annealing normalizing hardening and tempering and also it decides about the steel properties so austenite grain size plays a very important role in deciding about the quality of steel as well as heat treatment processes in this video i am going to tell you about how to determine this austenite grain size in steel so without wasting your time let me start but after a short break hello friends in metallurgical quality control series 2 part 6 i welcome all of you on my channel jagdish shobe as this video is on determination of austenite grain size of steel this austenite grain size plays a very important role in deciding the steel property as well as heat treatment process so i am going to tell you about details about how this austenite grain size is determined so let's move first of all flashback prior to this i have released five videos part 1 that was on germany hardenability test part 2 was on erection cupping test part 3 on charping impact test part 4 on iad impact test and the last one was part 5 that was on inclusion rating of steel so if you have not seen these parts you must see these parts also because they give a very valuable information for any metallurgist or the persons who are working under such conditions so must go and see this video if you have not seen it so let's see what it contains coverage first of all purpose why we are doing this test then test equipment what are used in this test equipments are used in this particular test then test methods and procedures precautions to be taken during this test and problems and their possible solutions so under these heading i'll be covering the entire video okay let's move so the first thing was purpose what is the purpose of doing this test austenite grain size determine following properties in steel what are those properties quality of steel and its heat treatment higher the grain size hardenability will be higher smaller the grain size higher will be the tensile and yield strength of the steel but ductility will be lowered and austenite grain size influences martensitic transformation so the purpose of doing test is to know about all these properties okay whatever i have just read it so this is the usefulness of this test that by doing this particular test you can determine all these parameters okay what are the equipments used in this first of all all sepal preparation equipment as shown here and then metallurgical microscope to see the micro okay i will not explain much about this because i have already explained in number of uh, slides so i'll move further test method i will be discussing about this micrographic method and in micrographic method ferritic grains and austenite grains in ferritic grains you prepare the sample and do etching by nitrile and you can see the ferrite grains but this test is not very uh, popular reason being as i have written here ferritic grain size is determined in case of non alloyed steel with carbon less than 0.25 so it is generally applicable for those thing which are less than 0.25 carbon and unalloyed means plain carbon steel 
But the other one is austerity grain size, which is much much popular and generally is done to determine the steel properties and heat treatment process. And this is austerity grains. This particular austerity grains size is determined by one is oxidation Cohn's oxidation method, and the other one is McQuadden carburizing method. So let's see further. See this procedure. I have earlier also referred. This is we follow the standard IS four seven four eight nineteen seventy eight. So if you want to go in detail about this, then we have to follow this standard. Okay. Then simple preparation. Same techniques are being used: cutting, belt grinding, emery paper grinding, mounting, diamond paste, then etching, and then seeing under microscope, but in etched condition. Okay, at hundred magnification. Okay, then move further. Now, what is this Cohn's oxidation method? This method is suitable for all types of steel, but as I mentioned earlier, less than 0.25 percent carbon. Okay, so in this case, what we do? We prepare a micro sample, okay, and then we heat and soak in a furnace in inert atmosphere, generally. Argon is used for this with polished surface at the top. In this case, you prepare a sample. Then one surface is polished surface. This polished surface is kept at the top. Okay. Then we introduce oxygen in the furnace for 15 seconds. Oxygen is introduced, and then the sample is taken out and it is either cooled by water or oil. Okay. And after that, this. Sample is the polished surface is wiped out, okay, with light grinding on emery paper so that oxidized layer is whatever is, uh, little oxidized layer is formed it is being removed but don't wipe it too much or grind it too much so that the entire layer is removed. Only you have to do a slight emery paper, okay, and then after that you go for etching. Examine the austerity grain size and compare with the standard chart. This is the entire procedure which is being used for this Cohn's method. In general, in metallurgical lab, generally we use uh, for carbon sulfur separators. There is a heating furnace is there, and in that we are using combustion tube. So in combustion tube we keep this sample, whatever the sample is there. Or you keep the sample in combustion tube and then insert the oxygen through oxygen cylinder. Okay, this oxygen cylinder you are using in lab also. So use that oxygen and insert uh, insert it in the tube so that it gets oxidized. And in that case, whatever the austerity grains are there, on that this oxidation takes place and grains are formed on the austerity grain which you are seeing under microscope by etching vanilla reagent. Vanilla reagent is used for etching this uh, in micro in uh, in oxidation method. Okay. Macquadin carburizing method. This is suitable for case carding steel. Generally, carburizing grade of steel, induction carding steel, they are being used for determining the austerity grain size. Okay. In this case, again the same sample preparation is there. But then you don't have to polish any one surface. You have to cut it and keep it and carburize it, pack carburize it at 925 degrees centigrade plus minus 10 degree for eight hours. This you have to do for eight hours. Minimum eight hours has to be used. And after that you have to cool the sample. Furnace cooling is done. Okay, cool it in the furnace itself. Then the entire surface when you take out the sample, it will be totally black. All the sides. Then you have to cut one section, and the cut section. Okay, that we have to polish, and then you have to etch with sodium picrate, alkaline sodium picrate solution in boiling condition, and examine under microscope. Okay, to see the austerity grain size, and when you see under microscope, you will see this appearance like this. The cementite grains are formed on the. You have tried uh, on this austerity grains, and you see this type of structure. So all these grains, white, are austerity grains. 
okay on which the cementite network has formed okay so this indicates the grain size of austenite basically now determining the average grain size of austenite how this is determined the average grain size this is seen under microscope and there is special chart is there if you go through that is standard there also this chart is there and then grain size is seen under microscope and then compared see this is a bigger one a smaller one a smaller one and goes on this and this become the finest one smallest grain size is there then you have to compare whatever you are seeing under microscope with this chart and then you have to match whether it is matching 7 or it is 6 or it is on 2 or 3 this you have to just compare and see it and then you have to decide what is the grain size of that particular steel as far as acceptance is concerned generally the grain size acceptance is 5 to 8 which i have written downward okay the other method of doing apart from comparison the other method is planimetric method which is all calculated okay and interception method again it is calculation based for this if you want to go through detail you go to the again indian standard 4748 wherein all these things are described in detail but in general wherever this system is not available generally it is done through this method comparison method okay because most of the labs they are not equipped with those things so in this case you have to just compare it and see that it falls under which type of grain size okay and then accordingly if it is 5 to 8 it is acceptable if it is 1 2 3 then it is not acceptable so this is about acceptance of the austenitic grain size now what are the precautions to be taken in this particular test all necessary precautions to be taken during sample preparation the sample preparation technique which i have explained earlier number of times during grinding polishing etching and everything you have to take proper precautions then etching in carbonizing method using alkaline sodium pegrit must be done in yes this is also one of the important thing which you have to take care that the etching has to be done in carbonizing method using boiling condition of sodium picrate alkaline sodium picrate solution this we have to use in boiling condition okay otherwise you will not be seen this particular austenite grain very clearly this this is required then grain size should be compared only at 100 magnification this is a primary requirement again you don't have to see 200 or 500 you have to see only at 100 magnification and then you have to compare with the standard chart and in oxidation method oxygen should be introduced for sufficient time to achieve a good oxidized surface this is also required if the oxide layers are very thin then when you wipe it out it will all go and you cannot guess it what is the grain size so it has to be introduced for a sufficient time so that a sufficient layer is formed and then partially remove it and then see the best of the rest of the thing okay then under microscope you see austenitic grain size in carbonizing method heating temperature and soaking time must be adhered as specified in this case heating and temperature as well as this soaking time has to be accurate because heating temperature as per the specification 920 plus minus 10 degree centigrade 925 plus minus 10 degree whereas soaking time should not be less than 8 hours it can go more than 8 hours 9 hours or 10 hours if you keep it less than 10 hour 8 hours then you will not get sufficient development of austenite grains so the real will be not accurate because austenite grains are not fully developed if it is soaked less than 8 hours so this soaking time has to be maintained then what are the problems and solutions in this test first of all austenite grain size grains are not clear this is not clearly visible so sample must be prepared or etching has to be done very consistently and we taking all the precaution which i have mere mention earlier in the precaution slide results are confusing check 
three samples in each case and then average it out. You have to check just to see the exact grain size of the steel then you have to average out. Minimum you have to take three samples and then you take average of those grain size sample. Then it will be a accurate one. In oxidation method, oxide layer is thin and washes away during polishing. This I have explained just now. You have to maintain at least increase the oxidation time to achieve a thick layer. You have to achieve a thick layer of oxidized layer so that you can see the grain size clearly. So this precaution has to be maintained and the possible solution is this. If you get this type of problem, the solution is this. So I think I have explained uh, most of the things related to this determination of austenitic grain size wherein I explained to you about various methods, okay, ferritic, then uh, austenitic grain size, then how austenitic grain size is checked by two methods, okay, oxidation method and carburizing method, what are the precautions to be taken, how the grain size is acceptable or not, what are the standard size, acceptance size, grain size, 5 to 8 is acceptable, and then whatever the problems we face and their possible solution. These things I have already covered in this particular video. I think it must be very useful to all of you who have been watching this uh, video and they will take care in their uh, work related area and they can utilize this knowledge. And if you feel that this video is okay and you like this video, then I request you kindly like it then give your suggestions, give your comments, you share with your friends, WhatsApp friends, and if you are new to my channel, please subscribe also, okay, but this is also necessary, just to keep me encouraged, your uh, subscription, subscription is very important for me, so please subscribe also, okay, now the next part is, part 7 is on effective case depth in carburizing, in case of carburizing, how to check effective case depth. This I will be covering in part 7 of this MQC series 2. So till then, thank you, thank you very much. Thanks a lot.